Hey guys, it's Claudia from Hands to Paws. Welcome to a live on nails as my dog digs in the bathroom. We are streaming live tonight from my personal page, Claudia Olson. We are streaming from the hand birds in the background. We are streaming from the Hands to Paws live page, and we are at Swaggy, at What's Up Dog on YouTube. Stay tuned for all um, the YouTube stuff because it is going to get busy over there, and it is that is a conversation channel where we talk all things drop dogs, so we can talk about everything and anything as long as we can relate a dog to it, and that is at Swaggy. So welcome to Hands to Paws, where we are going to discuss your dog's nails tonight. And um, put a one in the chat if you need some information about your dog's nails. Put a one in the chat if you're happy to hear about nails. Put a one in the chat if you enjoy these lives. Put a one in the chat if you're happy to see me back. Put in one in the chat if you would like me to start going live from our salon again, because we haven't done that in a while. I know people love it. Hey, staff, it gives us lots of opportunity for you to actually be a part of what is happening in the hands to pause salon interactively. And then maybe you'll join a live or you'll jump on what's up dog at swaggy and we can talk about it and you can ask me questions and give me your opinions. How much fun is that? Thanks, Steph, for putting in a one. So we have always, always have a little presentation for you, right? So I had did a dog's nails the other day and I, um, I took pictures of them because they were this long and you don't know what you don't know. So I don't, I don't ever want anybody that is on any of these to feel convicted or to feel guilty or to feel some kind of way that they don't know what they don't know about their dog's nails. And they've made a genuine attempt at home to do it. Maybe they've clicked the dog's nails. Maybe the dog screamed. Maybe there was a partnership and one of you held the dog and one of you tried to do the dog's nails. Um, and maybe that turned out to be a disaster. Maybe it didn't. I've known people that have laid on top of their dogs. You name it, I've heard it. <clears throat> is this you at home? Is, can you relate to that? If it is, put a one in the chat. Let me know. Is that you? Have you had those horrible experiences? If you have a groomer, a stylist close by you, we are, well, we're on the internet right now. So we're wherever you are. Yes, right? Have you sat on, have you done this with your dog? <sighs> Give me your butt. Yeah, um, we're live on the internet. So we're all over the place. But our actual salon is in Beverly Hills, Florida, um, and we're about an hour. Well, no, I, I lied. We're about two hours, two and a half hours away from Tampa. We are an hour away. We're not an hour away. We are about 40 minutes outside to Ocala, the horse capital of the world. I just would like you to know that Hands to Paws is the doodle capital of the world. And at this point, we can just basically say we specialize in every doodle under the sun. We are a salon designed for doodles and large dogs. Um, so let's get started before I get off on little tangents. If you like tangents, join YouTube. So we have lots of new people moving into the area. Welcome to all of you. No matter where you are, welcome to our team. Welcome to our family. Please feel free to either message me, email me, um, correspond with me if you have dog questions. We are going to have guests again coming this year and in the future. And of course, Natalia, the most beautiful trainer, will be on to talk dog training, which seems to be a really lost art. Um, and this is not about dog training, but we will, uh, we will do more on dog training. So the first thing I want you to know is don't feel bad if your dog's nails are really long. Uh, foot aversion, a dog not wanting their feet touched can come from several, several reasons. 
during a major learning period when they're a puppy between eight and let's say 12 weeks, they can have an incident. Somebody could step on their paw. They could get their paw caught in a crate. They could um, get their paw caught in a door. Something minorly traumatic could happen and just that dog can create an association with their feet and never want anybody to touch their feet. Two is a puppy, a very young puppy, eight, nine weeks old, they get their nails done. They're not really going to give you a lot of pushback. They really don't know. They're an infant, a baby by nature. So they don't even know to give you pushback. The second time you go do their nails, they're more like a toddler that doesn't want their face washed. And they could do the puppy histrionics, which sounds like you're about to murder them. You are not. Um, and they could give you their little sharp little needle teeth and they could put up a real wonderful puppy baby temper tantrum. However, let me reassure you, that is all that is. So I like to equate it to a two-year-old getting their face washed after having a spaghetti dinner and thinking that is just terrible um, because that is what a puppy does. Schnauzer puppies in particular <coughs> are incredibly dramatic about this when they are puppies. So when you're teaching a Schnauzer puppy new and invasive things, they tend to scream like you're murdering them. The thing about Schnauzers is once they grow out of that, once the Schnauzer, I call them the accountants of the dog world, because once they think that's what they're supposed to do, you have a hard time convincing them that it's not. So once a schnauzer knows how to have their nails done, it's like, please get this done. I'll be perfect. Just perfect. Okay. So a lot of times we get bad associations when we're dealing with the very, very young. Um, Cause we don't really understand that they're just literally giving us temper tantrums. And it's just a part of their regular development. And when they're very, very young, their little nails grow and they grow like little talons like that. And they need to be clipped about once a week. So it's great if you have a nail clipper and you can do that at home. That's perfect. Otherwise, at Hands to Paws, we always have Muddy Monday, which is $3 off. A small dog's nails are $10. A large dog's nails are $12. And Muddy Monday is all about nails. We always have extra person there just to do everybody's nails. Otherwise, you can walk in any day during the week. We are open from 8 to 6 and just get your dog's nails done. Again, 10 for small, 12 for large, $3 off on Monday. If you're not next to us here in Florida and Beverly Hills, it sounds so fancy. Um then I recommend that you always vet your stylist. Know who your stylist is. Not all groomers and or stylists are created the same. So you want a good relationship. You want trust. Without trust, your dog is not going to have a good experience and neither then are you. Because groomers and stylists are human beings and you want to make sure you pick and vet the right human being. So don't be afraid. We invite you into Hands to Paws to come in and meet us. We always, we don't, it could be the busiest day in the world. You're still going to get our attention. We're still going to take the time to introduce ourselves. And we have an open door policy and we are not going to allow you to have your face in your dog's face. We might say, Hey, can you remove your face? But we are going to allow you to stand with your dog. That is for your anxiety and for the dogs. So puppies nails about once a week, every other week, Please come in. I don't even mind. None of our team even mind showing you how to do it. Now, with that said, I don't do my own dog's nails. You're not getting me to do Jackson, Balto's, or Jillian's nails. I'm their mother. I have parent privilege. So I may have done this for the last 40 years of my life, and I might have the patience of the saint with all of your dogs, but my baby goes to give me the lip, and he tucks his foot, and he hides his foot, he does all this stuff. I'm going to check my battery here. He does all this stuff and 
I get frustrated. That's my dog. And what does my dog have? My dog has direct connection to my emotions. So I might, I'll get frustrated. So I most certainly don't do my own dog's nails. I don't have dogs that stand there like this for their nails. I have dogs that I mentioned it, tuck, pull, snarl, show teeth. They do all the antics. I have a different stylist for each dog. So each one of my dogs, I have matched the appropriate stylus. So I have a 13 year old dog that goes to one person. I have an 11 year old dog going on 12 goes to another person. And I have a four and a half year old dog and she has very specific needs and she goes to somebody else because I want to make sure that my dogs are always having a good experience. And where does good experience come from? It comes from trust and good relationship. So feel free to vet your stylist, even if you're just nails is a great way to walk into a salon and introduce yourself. It's a great way to walk into a salon and observe. And, um, and I can't speak for other salons, but I, this is what I would say. If I were, let's say I go out of town in March on vacation and I'm in St. Augustine and I'm going to, I'm not going to bring my dogs this time. I'm going to bring my birds. So God, I just got another bird, by the way. His name's Morocco from Miami. And he's a macaw. I just adopted him, did the whole adopted thing. So let's say that I wanted, let's say Morocco was a Morocco from Miami was a dog, and I wanted to get his nails done. And I just I don't know anything about St. Augustine. I don't know the area. I'm there on vacation. I have my pet with me. I'm thinking of moving there. I walk into the salon to get my animal's nails done. Don't bring your birds to hands to paws. We don't do birds. And um, it's a great way to observe and introduce myself without being committed to leaving my dog. Does that make sense? So how can I vet my groomer without being offensive or without feeling that I'm offensive or not feeling awkward? Because you don't want to feel awkward when you're talking to people, right? And everybody's going to tell you they're the best with the animals, but maybe they are, maybe they're not. That's more about your feelings with your animal. Your emotions are attached to your animal. So you've got to do, just like a child, you've got to do the homework in order to feel really secure. Because if you have the greatest stylist in the world, the absolute kitten caboodle, they can have a bad day. And, and you'll find that very acceptable if you have a really good trusting relationship with that person. However, if you do not, you will not find that acceptable and um, it could create a lot of problems. And you don't want that. Your dog doesn't want that. Your dog reads their energy. So you want to be able to walk right in with your dog, vet your stylist, request a stylist. If you like one person, what I did for somebody today was they have a... Um, a uh, dog that doesn't like certain procedures done and was getting a D-shed. And um, she was great. She's adorable, adorable. And her name is Abby. And Abby's parents adore her fully. And Abby gets sensey about getting brushed in her chest and her back end. And you do not touch Abby's feet. She says, oh, no, no, no. So Abby warns you that she will escalate she'll get overstimulated and she'll use her teeth if you're not listening to her and reading the cues so abby was placed with her main stylist aaron poodle pro wonderful um and her second stylist as tracy and the notes literally reflect that so when abby comes in we have notes that tell us that Abby will lose her temper if you don't listen to her. She's going to communicate every step of the way, but you must listen to her. Her stylist, Aaron, already knows that. However, if Aaron were not well one day or was on vacay or was spending a wonderful weekend with her son, Tracy would be available because Tracy knows Abby. What we don't want to do is put Abby in 
new hands is going to make her nervous. It's going to make the new stylist nervous because we wouldn't want Abby to ever actually go follow through with that bite. And we would never want the stylist to send the signal that they're afraid of Abby. Does that make sense to everybody? Put a one in the chat. If you understood that it is critical, not always, not all dogs need this, but some dogs do, that you have a stylist that you trust for your dog's sense of security and for yours. Okay. So dogs need their nails done about every two weeks. Now, if you are in New York City and you're in Manhattan and you walk, you would love to be I'm in Manhattan. I'm going, I'm going to Macy's tomorrow. Um, that's my fancy Manhattan voice. Uh, I, I actually spent a lot of time in Manhattan, actually from New York. So if you're from New York, I'm not making fun of you. I'm one of you. So don't get mad. Don't come for me. Uh, so if I were in Manhattan and I had to walk my dog all the time, the two week rule of thumb may not apply. If you're a walker or you're a runner, let's see if a Weimariner and you're out there and you're jogging and you're running with your Weimariner, you also may not need your dog's nails done every two weeks. However, if you're very, very comfortable, it's snowing in New York. Is it still snowing in New York? Somebody put a chat, a one in the chat if it's still snowing in New York. However, if you're in sunny, beautiful Florida, where mm, it got to be in the 30s one day, I was very, very cold, and I had to put on a small jacket, <laughs> um, your dog's nails probably need to be done every two weeks. And by all means, you can walk in anytime in our salon. You can vet a groomer by doing that. And you can also request. So if you're requesting nails, Usually our team has the same days off, but you might want to call and make sure that person that you prefer is there and available. Just a hint. So white nails are easier than black nails because white nails, you can actually see that live living vein. You've all heard of it. Have you heard of it? If you haven't heard of it, there is a vein that grows in the nail. It's called the quick. It is a live living vein full of blood vessels. And if you cut through it, the dog's toenail bleeds. Has anybody ever done that? Put a one in the chat. I did it to one of my favorite, favorite dogs, Caesar. Um, not this last time, but the time before when he was into nails. And how did that happen? If a dog is pulling their foot, if you're playing this game with a dog, your thumb um, cannot receive the signal from your brain after a certain point when it's in motion even if you think stop you cannot stop your fingers or you're like oh no i'm gonna get that quick but it's already in motion and if he's he he pushed in and when he pushed in my thumb was already in motion i cut right through as quick so we don't want dogs doing this or at hands to pause we're going to show you how to stabilize their leg and how to appropriately use a second person to get that leg stabilized so you don't run into those things. And if you've ever bled a dog at home, if you've tried this and you've gotten all that blood, put a one in the chat. It is so common. And unfortunately, it scares the daylights out of people. It scares me too, but it's the quick. And yes, can it hurt? Absolutely. Absolutely. This live living, can the, a toenail become infected from that? Absolutely. And um, do you want that to happen? Absolutely not. Some dogs will allow a nail clipping. We prefer we'll cut some off with the nail clipper and then we'll grind them. But each dog is an individual. So if you were to say to me right now, Claudia, do you cut the nails and then grind them or do you grind them and then cut them? What do you just grind them? And people will come in and say, I just want my dog's nails grinded. Don't cut them. Or I don't want them grinded. I just want them cut. Well, we're going to do what's in the best interest of your dog. And how are we going to know that? How are you going to know that, Claudia? How do you, stranger, know what's in the best interest of my dog? Because I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen what your dog tells me. As soon as I pick up his foot, I'm going to see if he's going to tolerate the clipping. So some dogs have incredibly bad association. They'll see that nail clipper and it's on. Like, mm, come on. Duck and weave, duck and weave, let's go. Because they see the nail clipper and they have been restrained 
they've been vet held. They haven't been like, it's okay. Or they've already have such a negative association. It's dukes up, pause up, let's go, pause up. But they may not have that association with the nail grinder. Is one better than the other? Nail grinding is always better. Nail grinding is always better because when I cut that nail, see those beautiful black nails on the slide there? I'm going to get close to the quick. If I get very, if I don't cut the quick and I just get close to the quick and the dog walks out and gets super excited and hits something, he can pop that quick, pop. And all of a sudden you've got blood. So we don't, we don't like that. The other thing is I can only get close to that vein and the vein will naturally start to retract because it's alive and living, right? You get close to it and it starts to move back. It'll also grow with a nail. So the longer the nail, the longer the vein. And the nail grinder will literally naturally make that vein retreat. It moves back. Isn't this interesting? You know, I don't care how many times I talk about this. It always fascinates me. It does. The body is an amazing miracle. So it'll move back. So if the dog does not have a negative association with the nail grinder, we often can take a dog with a very negative association, bad experience, trauma, has a little PST for a nail cutter, but will allow the nail grinder. However, there are other dogs that absolutely, it can be the vibration from the nail grinder or negative association. Maybe they went somewhere, again, they were held, they were restrained. They didn't, I'm not saying anybody was mean, but they didn't perceive kindness and they developed a negative association. So they won't allow that grinder. So what we tell you at Hands to Paws is we're going to cut and grind depending on what's on the best interest of your dog. We might do one, we might do the other, we might do both. So when you ask me, what do you do? What do you do? You cut them and then grind them or you grind them and then cut them. What do you do? We do whatever is in the best interest of that individual canine that is in front of us. Okay. And that's what you want everybody doing. Their two dogs are not alike. Black nails are harder than white nails. If you have a dog with both black and white, please go look at them. You can see the vein in the white nail. If you flip the vein over, um, if you flip the vein over, if you flip the nail, the paw, let's call it a paw. If you flip the paw over on the black nails, you can see where there's a hollow part and when where the vein starts. So if the nails are incredibly long, and let's say you had life events and your nails are incredibly long and you didn't notice and all of a sudden you're sitting around the house you're getting everything together you're getting everything caught up and all you hear is click 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 that is um could be your dog's nails now can that cause discomfort when walking and standing absolutely is that uncomfortable yes it's very very uncomfortable and your dew claws, which are up high that see no traction. If they have a dog with hair, they can be covered with hair. You'll never even see them to think about them. And if they are not maintained, as you can see in that picture, they can curl over. And a lot of dogs have nails that when they grow, they curl. So those nails are also dangerous too, because both of these can grow and curl into the pad of the nail. I mean, the pad of the paw. Pa -pa 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 pad of the paw. Say that fast five times. Pad of the paw. Pad of the paw. Pad of the paw. Hey, I only had two more times and I nailed it. And this can cause splitting. It can cause breaking of the nail. And here's a good one that you don't want to experience. You just don't want to experience. It can get snagged. So dew claws 
can get snagged on cloth, on blankets, on furniture. But what happens when it gets snagged? It gets ripped out. And what happens? There's blood everywhere. There's blood everywhere. And then after that, it can become infected. And you could have this major thing on your hand just because those nails were too long. Again, you don't know what you don't know. So don't go into self-blaming and shaming and guilt because it's not about that. Life is going to come up. You're going to run behind. You're going to, you know, the dog's, oh my God, I didn't get my dog's nails done. Just bring them in. Just get it fixed. Okay. Don't, don't do a lot of that. It doesn't work out anyway. The other thing that can happen, which is super important. And I always, I told this story to a lovely young woman the other day who came in the salon and it was her recently deceased sister's dog. And she was a lovely, lovely, lovely young girl. Very, very sweet. Obviously very attached to the dog. And the dog's nails looked about like this. So we had a long conversation about it. We discussed all the paw health and I showed her how to do it herself. And I invited her to stand with me anytime she wants to come in and get that dog's nails done. But here's what I didn't want to see happen. I didn't want to see the nails get too long and the dogs walking on them, causing the dog discomfort. Okay. How did I think that was the salon? No, that to cause your dog, um, it causes discomfort, but it spreads the pad. So, uh, all right. So here's the, my dog's foot, my pretty Colorado turquoise ring. Because to know me is to know I love turquoise. And now the dog is walking on the nails and his paw is doing this okay so instead of his paw being like this his paw digits are split out can you see on this dog how those paw digits are split out well what happens is what happens what happened was what happens is is if this dog continues to walk like that the bones are going to start to be placed like that and that can cause dysfunction in the foot. It can cause arthritis. It can cause all sorts of issues that you should never have to deal with. Never. Now, if your dog's nails are just long like that, and it's been a month or two, that's not going to happen. This has to be walking consistently on nails like that. When I was 19, I had a miniature pincher. His name was Captain. And I most certainly, well, he, I, I got him when I was like, 17. It was 19 when I was educated. Um, I started grooming at 19 and I was educated on how I started working with vets right away. As soon as I started grooming, I was working with veterinarians and it was the veterinarians that educated me on the importance of the foot and paw care. So if that's you, take your guilt and throw it away. It's no good. It's useless. The only thing it's good for is changing a behavior you don't want. Okay. And dogs do not live in shame and guilt. That's, they just don't. They live in the moment. They don't forget a thing, but they live in the moment. Let me make this bigger. It's been a minute, so I'm not as refreshed. I'll put my glasses on and see what this little diagram is showing us. All right. So, this little diagram, it's a great little diagram. Let's see if we can make it bigger because it's fantastic. Okay. So that's showing you your pads. Again, it's showing you your nails. We had a, a, a sweetheart of a dog in today, regular. Her name is Bella and Bella's a boxer. And Bella's nails very much, even after being cut, look like that. But mom's so on top of it. She makes sure they never hit the floor. There's your metacarpal pad. And your other pads to show the foot. The foot bone's connected to the leg bone. The leg bone's connected to the hip bone. The hip bone's connected to the back bone. So one is intertwined with the next, with the next, with the next. I often can tell when people are bringing their dogs in 
to have their nails done. If I have the opportunity and I am there to do that, I will often let the pet parent know how the dog walks because we become as stylists and groomers, we become a bit of a gait expert. A gait is how your dog walks. So when the dogs go into the show ring and the judge is standing there judging, he's looking at their gait. So when we do nails and we can watch a dog walk, we can literally tell you the dog's favoring is left, is right. We're never going to give you a diagnosis because we are not veterinarians. We are stylists. However, we can tell you what leg or foot that dog favors. And I personally have let people know I had a young pit and they went and the dog had, um, I forget the dog had like a cruciate issue or a hip issue, but most often more than not, people are very grateful. Um, or a lot of times they already know that the dog might have a little bit of an issue. Sometimes that issue is simple arthritis, but I don't tell you to that to you can run to the veterinarian. I tell you so that you're aware of how your dog is walking and how they're grinding their nails. Information for you, whether you come to Hands to Paws or you go to any stylist, Hands to Paws always wants to make sure that your dog is prepared for any experience so all their experiences are good ones. Nail quick. So there's that white nail I was telling you about. Can you see that beautiful vein right there? Are you able to see that, that right there in the white nail, that beautiful, beautiful vein? So that would be a very easy nail to just cut because that is about as transparent as it gets. That vein is also very far back. So it you can see where it is. You can see that it has a little string that comes up. That little piece, not that big chunk of pink, but that little piece can also bleed. And you see the black nails? They're nice and grinded back. Beautiful, beautiful. And if you bring your dog in every two weeks, we have report cards at Hands to Paws. And where it says nails, if I ever, if I have the report card in my hand, you're guaranteed I'm writing every two weeks. Every two weeks. Do I make personally make every two weeks? No, but I make about every three weeks. And I definitely make it by four weeks. So not every two weeks is not always in my schedule. Four weeks has to be in my schedule or it will affect my, especially, older dogs walking. That makes sense? It's a win-win for you and the dog. It's a win-win for you and the dog. Prevention is a thousand cures. Why spend a lot of money at the vet when you don't have to for something that you can literally just prevent? Again, most grooming salons, I can't speak for other salons, I can only speak for hands to paws, but most grooming salons have walk-in nail grinds. So this is just a picture of showing white nails. And this is a dog, I don't know what happened to that dog's foot, it looks painful. It looks just painful. I want to go soak that baby's foot in nice warm water and wrap it up with vet wrap and maybe bring him to the vet. So that looks like that nail was snagged or torn off. Remember a little bit earlier, I was talking about long nails and a nail can get snagged on furniture. I've had lots of dogs come in where I've had to call the parent and say, are you aware that this dog has already lost his nail? And then what do we do at hands to pause? We just educate you. It's all we do. We're going to educate you. We're not going to shame you. Don't let anybody shame you. You don't know what you don't know. And if you have to learn it, that's absolutely fine. Here's another picture of that quick. It's real important, right? There's the quick. And you can see the separate part, that white part coming through. So that remember, I just showed you on the other picture that super pink pink and you, you think you're safe. And then there's this thinner part that comes out 
And that is definitely, so when I say popping a quick, you might've gotten too close to the tip of that second part of the quick, or you might've cut through that. All right, now on a white nail, that's super easy. On a white nail and a super cooperative dog on a good day. We do nails all day. So yeah, so walk in nails, a muddy Monday, muddy Monday, do do. Oh God, I wanna get a copyright brand. So nails are one of the easiest things to maintain. Nails are one of the easiest ways you can bring your dog in to a local salon, including hands to paws and do a meet and greet with their staff. Nails are, are always need to be maintained and most dogs need them done every two weeks. Nails are a great way to make sure that you like a certain stylist or groomer. Nails are a great way to vet your stylist, vet who you like. At Hands to Paws, we have several stylists. We are a completely kind handling salon. That does not mean we do not do invasive procedures or all dogs are completely happy with us at all times. What we find is the dog comes in and says, I don't think you know who I am and I am spoiled and that is not how my parents do it. And we go, we understand. So we want your dogs to have a wonderful, caring experience that they're happy to come see us. We don't want dogs running away. We don't want them running out. We want them to have a trusting, loving relationship. We also want you to have a trusting relationship. Without trust, there is no relationship. Without trust, we should not do business. Without trust, we have set everybody up to fail. In a dog's world, in a canine's world, leadership and trust are survival. So if there is no trust, there is not a very good chance of survival. Leadership is key and trust is imperative. That doesn't mean that your baby always wants us to lift up their foot, doesn't mean that they want us to do their nails, but they trust in our leadership and our kindness and we listen listen to the signs and signals of the dog expressing to us that they are uncomfortable, maybe in the way we're holding them, that they are apprehensive, maybe they've had a bad experience, or they are having some anxiety being away from their pet parent. Does that make sense to everybody? What do you think about your dog's nails? I think I should make an appointment with my dog's stylist because I don't do my dog's nails. His name is Jackson and he's a cattle dog. <sighs> I've often videotaped him because he is ridiculous about it. Can you touch your dog's feet? When you're touching your dog's feet and you want to make sure they're good for nails, do you press those digits? Press, press. Watch me, watch me now. I'm gonna nay nay. Um, <laughs> okay, squirrel. That's kind of my sense of humor. Um, I'm gonna press on those digits. Press, press, press. When I'm pressing there, I'm creating a little discomfort. Why am I creating a little discomfort? Because I want you to know that it's not the most comfortable thing in the world, and I'm gonna treat you, treat you, treat you, treat you, treat you. So at home, what can you do? Press discomfort, press discomfort, treat, treat, treat. Good baby, good baby, good baby. Let me make this very, very clear. The more you tell your dog what is good and what you like, the more likely they're going to give that to you. So if I can press and create a little discomfort and I can give the baby a treat and tell them I like it, then they are more likely to allow me to do it, even if it's a little uncomfortable. Does that make sense? What do you think of that? What do you think of stylus? So curious about your thoughts. 
And I'm really curious to see what you think about What's Up Dog and all the great conversations we're going to have over there. I'm curious to know what you think about Hands to Paws. I'm also curious to know if you enjoy these videos and want more of them. And I'd also like to let you know, I'm glad I'm back. Would you like me to start doing lives from the salon again? Would you like to come in no matter where you are into Hands to Paws and meet our phenomenal team? Because I'm going to tell you, I've been in this business for 40 years and we have the most phenomenal, loving, caring team. They are wonderful. They are kind. They are honest. They are consistent. And they fill out their report cards and they will talk to you about your dog's specific needs. About your dog's specific needs. Would you like that? Those are things you want. Let us know. Those are things you like. Let us know. We are also veterinarian recommended because we send the dogs for medical back. We will let you know if we possibly think there's a issue going on with your dog. We are not veterinarians. We will not diagnose, but we will let you know if we think that your dog needs to go see their veterinarian because it is that important to us that your dog's health and well-being is cared for medically before styling, okay? Because we want your dog to be with you for as long as they can be with you. We don't want you to miss not one minute, not one minute. So if you enjoyed this live stream and you enjoy these videos, let me know what you think. If you're um, excited about the live videos, let me know. And if you want to join What's Up Dog, it's a little hard to find on YouTube, so give me a minute. But you can type in at Swaggy and subscribe and like videos there. Well, guys, I don't have any questions that I can see. Because I'm streaming on so many, um, I, I have a friend coming in March. If she's still watching... I believe we're going to be getting a new, more upgraded computer so that I can see all the chats. So she's going to help me figure this out anyway. And, um, and so if I, you are seeing um, and I'm not seeing it, please, I am not ignoring you. I will see it after the live stream and I will get back to you uh, with any of your questions. If you're calling the salon, you're texting me, you're trying to reach me and it can take me up to 24 hours to get back to people. So please don't believe I'm ignoring you. I am not. I cannot always commit to getting back to everybody during the day as I am at the salon or I am doing errands for the salon or I am with a dog or I am doing something and I get home and I'm an old lady. So I sit down and I asleep, but I'll start again the next day. So I'm not ignoring you. Give me up to 24 hours. I do have assistants that help me check and look for things. So, and we are always open to suggestions, recommendations on topics that you would like me to talk about. You would like me to look into. Um, you just let me know. Please be interactive and a part of. And tell us your thoughts. I'm interested in what you the pet owner has to say. All right, guys. I think that was a pretty good live. You'll let me know. And you have a great Tuesday night. And I will see you at the salon. Bye, guys. <laughs>